Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and this week I made this little paper mache lop-eared bunny. I started out with a clay model, a wet clay, and then I put paper strips and paste over it. It's the way that I make a lot of my masks, but I don't usually make actual sculptures that way because sometimes it can be a little bit tricky getting the clay out. As a matter of fact, I think the last time that I actually made something with paper mache using this method was a rabbit that I made in one of the very first projects that I put on my website. <laughs> that was a really long time ago. So let's go ahead and get started. I got started with the project the way I always do, by finding some really good photographs of lop-eared rabbits. And I found these particular photographs on pixabay.com, but there are hundreds of them on the internet. So make sure that you do find some you can use for reference. Then I got out some of my wet clay. That, that's what I happen to have, is W-E-D clay. And the rabbit is going to be made with paper strips and paste over a bunny that's sculpted with clay. I happen to have the wet clay in the house, so that's what I used, but you could use any oil-based modeling clay instead if that's what you prefer to use. Uh, the the, the oil-based modeling clay that I happen to prefer is Sargent's Plastilina. I don't have any right now, but I do like using it because it's softer than most of the modeling clays. It's a little bit easier to move the clay around um, not as fast as wet clay, but uh, better <laughs> for my purposes than most um, oil-based modeling clays. And it also, because it's fairly soft, it keeps you from trying to put in a whole lot of really tiny details that are going to be covered up with the paper mache anyway. Sargent's Plastilina is also a lot less expensive than most modeling clays. So if you want to use that kind of clay and you don't have any already in the house, that's what I would recommend or use any wet clay. You can get some um, really inexpensively down at your local pottery store. Now I'm not using a pattern on the inside of my bunny like I usually do when I sculpt. Um, I, I, I normally would use you know just a, a pattern that's made of the, um, the outline of the animal and I've got a video that shows you how to do that. The reason I like using them because it, it makes all the proportions right right from the beginning because I didn't use one this time. It actually took a little bit longer than it would normally um, just because I had to keep going back over it and adding some things and moving things around to, just to get the proportions right. But this time I didn't want to do that because I have to take all the clay out of the inside of the paper mache after it's dry. You can't leave it in there. And if I had a, a pattern in there, I'd have to actually cut the, the rabbit apart right down the middle. And I really didn't want to do that this time. You can, uh, it, it is possible, people do it all the time, but I really didn't want to. So just to make it a lot easier this time, I didn't put the pattern on the inside and I just used the clay. I just started out with a kind of a blob of clay, as you can see, and I made kind of a basic shape of a body, uh, sort of the way I think it was gonna look. It, it got changed a lot as I went along. Now once I kind of played around with the feet and the and the body, I started in on the head. They're really fun to, to sculpt. They all look pretty much exactly the same. So he's got those two lumps in the front on his muzzle. Then you've got a ball underneath them for his chin and a, a smaller one yet for his nose. And that gives you the shape for right at the front of his muzzle. And then I did put two balls of uh, just wooden balls that I happen to have here I, I stuck those on for his eyeballs. Then you have some, some wider clay underneath his eyes for his cheeks. And he's got a big eyebrow bone over the eyes. And once you have those basic shapes on, it's really just a matter of blending everything together so you can get exactly the look you're after. Um, on the photographs, his, the, the top of his body comes um, almost to the middle of his head. And I, I kind of had was giving him a neck or something. It just, it just wasn't working, didn't, didn't feel right. But as soon as I could see what was wrong with it, I went ahead and added more clay to his back, made the body a lot bigger, uh, changed the, the feet and the legs around a little bit. And then I just started smoothing the clay out with a little tool I've got. 
And then after I, I had smoothed them out with the tool, I used a soft brush and some water to smooth them out even more. Now, the water is actually not just for smoothing it, actually. Um, the water is really helpful when it comes time to cover him up with plastic. We're going to have to put him plastic on it before we put the paper mache on because you can't just put, you know, paper right on wet clay or it never would dry out again. You have to put the, uh, the plastic on there. But dry plastic won't stick to dry clay. It does stick to wet clay. So the, the wetter your clay is, the easier it's going to be to put the plastic on there. But you don't want to get too carried away or it'll be too easy to kind of mush things around. So it, using a brush really helps. You can control how much water you're really putting on there. I wasn't quite done with the shapes though. So I added a little bit more on the front of his muzzle just to get that looking the way I wanted it to. Now one major thing that I had to fix was, <laughs> and this was kind of creepy, I was, had to move one of his eyes outward. When I was down there looking at him, you know, straight on, I could see that one eye was way further inside of his head than the other one. So the only way to get it back out was to stick a tool down through the top of his head. Um, I pushed it out with a tool, made sure that they were both in the right place, and then I just covered up that hole. And then I got out my clay ear and I drew around it on some scrap paper. Uh, I just cut those out and I, I tried those on so now he's actually, I, I can see how he looks with two ears. The final ears are going to be a little bit different and they're going to be made out of cereal box cardboard. But this could kind of give me a good idea of what he's going to look like when she's done. Now, like I said, you can't put paper mache directly over wet clay. So what I do is cover it with a, uh, some plastic wrap from the kitchen. It's really thin, so it goes on um, and it can flatten it straight over the clay as long as the clay is wet. But you do have to kind of mess around with it a little bit. Uh, it, you know, when, when it uh, overlaps itself, you need to make the plastic wet because dry plastic doesn't, doesn't stick to dry plastic either, but it does stick to the water. I don't understand the physics of that, but that does seem to be the way it works. You have to be really careful to push it into all the dips in the crannies on your sculpture so you don't you know, you don't let the plastic decide what your shapes are. And you do have to cut some of it because it's going to overlap too much or get all bunched up in certain places. So you will need to cut some of it away. But, but you just keep working on it very slowly. Definitely don't rush this part or, or you're going to lose too much of your sculpture. Once the plastic was on there, I started using some very small strips of newspaper. And I was using cooked flour and water paste. It, it dries clear and it, it makes the, because it's really wet, it uh, makes the newspaper lay down really nice and, and smooth. It took um, at least an hour to cover it up and the ears aren't on there yet. Those are going to come on later because you have to have access to everything in the ears or it would make it really hard to, uh, to cover his face. So I left those for later. And I just kept working on it. Like I said, it took at least an hour to get all of them covered up because I'm using such small pieces of uh, newspaper. And I did want to cover it with, you know, overlap everything at least twice just to make sure that it's nice and, and hard when it's done. I'm going to give him another layer after this layer is dry. But I once I had this all covered up, I um, just left him sitting on the table overnight. So in the morning, um, I got out some lightweight brown paper. This is really just unbleached newspaper. It, uh, it did help to make sure that I was covering everything. There was a couple of pieces right under his chin that didn't get covered with the second layer, but everything else did. When it was finally dry, I used a long knife to separate the clay from the board. If I had put a piece of plastic on there, I probably wouldn't have had to do that. You have to be really careful to make sure that the paper mache is absolutely dry before you do any of this because if it's not, uh, when you pull the clay out, the whole thing's going to collapse. I I started out um, taking the clay out with a spoon. <laughs> that was 
kind of irritating until I figured out that I actually have a couple of tools that were specifically made <laughs> for that particular use. And as soon as I got those out, it went pretty fast. You do need to be careful though, that you're not um, poking any tool through the paper mache. You have to be slow. Um, you don't want to hold on to them so tightly that you're going to be squishing the paper mache. So you, you do need to, to take a lot of care when you're taking the clay out. Uh, the head was the hard part. And you can kind of imagine if, if the head had been like longer and skinnier, like a, a wolf or something, or um, if he had f legs, or if I had added the, the ears with the clay, then it would have been really hard to get the clay out. You really have to be an engineer and think about it before you even get started. Where can I put the clay and will I be able to get it back out again? If you can't get it out, then you've got a really big problem. You can always cut it out if you have to. You, you can cut your, your paper mache, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to get the paper mache pieces back together again. Once all the clay was out, I went and found a small piece of really heavyweight corrugated cardboard and I cut it out. It wasn't cut exactly <laughs> to the right shape. You know, it didn't fit around the feet and toes because it was just too hard to cut it. But it was close enough. Then I used some paper tape to, to just attach it around the edges and, and covered the tape up with more paper strips and paste. I didn't put paper mache all over the flat bottom though. Because flat cardboard, even when it's really thick like this, it does tend to warp if you put paper mache on just one side. When that was dry, I cut her ears out of light cardboard, just cereal box cardboard. And I had to shape those with a, a few cuts so that it would be kind of rounded up at the top, uh, right where it attaches to the head. Um, taped those together so they'd stay where they belonged and then covered the ears themselves with paper strips and paste while they're still off of the rabbit. That way I could actually reach the insides of the, of the ears. And when that was all done, I just went ahead and attached her, her ears onto her head and stuck more paper strips and paste on there. So now the, the actual paper mache is done. And even though there's only like three or four layers on here, I thought I was gonna have to add more layers just to make it strong enough. But once the base got on here, it's actually, th this could last as long as you keep it dry. I, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use this every single year for Easter decorations if you wanted to. Um, it's, it's really pretty strong. Um, now, I am going to paint it but not quite yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. There's another experiment that I want to do, and I, I think I might want to use her as my guinea pig for that experiment. So you'll see how she looks next week when I get it all done. Uh, there are some reasons why this was kind of a pain in the neck doing it this way, but I really like using a clay model with plaster cloth. Really like it. And I probably will be making quite a few of the items that are on that list that you all gave me a couple of videos ago. Um, in fact, the rabbit was on that list. And a lot of those are going to be going outside and I probably will make a lot of them using the clay first, then put plaster cloth over that, and then the paper cement clay on top of that. Obviously have to take all the clay out, but once you have a hollow shell like that, and it should be waterproof once it's sealed, it'll be a nice lightweight um, sculpture that can go outside and even I will be able to lift it. So I really look forward to making some of those. So I will be using that whole process a lot uh, this year probably, but not necessarily with uh, paper strips and paste. So make sure that you watch for the next video. I do have a really exciting experiment that I'm going to be doing. It wasn't entirely my idea, but it's something that I should have done a really long time ago, uh, something that will hopefully make it a lot easier for us to find the materials that we need to make paper mache clay. So make sure that you watch for that. In the meantime, go make something. <laughs> Come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.